Greetings, everyone. I'm Addison Pollock, Director of Community Engagement with AARP Indiana, and I am uh, so happy to be joined by Bethany Watson. She's with Gleaners Food Bank, and she's the Director of Corporate and Foundation Relations. Hi, Bethany. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Very good. Very good. I'm excited to have you on our show. This is in. Um, for folks out there who are not familiar with the show, we typically interview uh, community partners across the state. And today we are talking about community challenge grants. So um, if you haven't seen the news, uh, the 2022 community challenge grant uh, cycle is now open. Um, it is open through March 22nd at, uh, and it closes at 5 p.m. Eastern time. So if you're interested in learning more about those grants, uh, you can go to aarp.org slash livable to learn more about those. Um, reason I'm speaking with Bethany today is because she and Gleaners, they are a past recipient of the Community Challenge Grant, we received a grant in 2020. So we're hoping to uh, showcase this grant and this project and um, talk a little bit more about what's possible with the Community Challenge Grant program. So uh, Bethany, just to kick it off, if you don't mind just describing your Community Challenge Grant experience with Gleaners, what was the project that you worked on? What was the process? Sure. So the basic project that we did with AARP was we used funding to purchase some shopping carts um, for what we call our senior shopping day locations. Um, part of our programming is that we have a few of our agencies or hunger relief partners that when they distribute food, they'll have a day designated for um, seniors 55 and older to be able to come in and get food. And that's because uh, seniors tend to be the fastest growing food insecure population in the U.S., um, Indiana being no exception. Um, and so we had wanted to address some of the mobility issues for our senior shopping day agencies. Um, our uh, local service manager in some of our rural counties pointed out that a lot of our senior shopping day locations didn't have any shopping carts. Um, which if you've ever been to a grocery store and you don't pick up a grocery cart on the way in, you quickly realize how quickly you can fill up your arms with stuff and it can be overwhelming. So for people that are trying to get food, um, it can be cumbersome to be able to get as much food as they need. Um, and it sounds like such a small investment, but being able to provide grocery carts was such a huge lift for those agencies and for seniors to go through the line, um, get the food that they need and be able to put it in their cars and be able to um, have enough to nourish their entire household and be able to kind of supplement um, those basic needs to be able to afford other purchases and be able to um, get what they need to, to make their budget work for the month. That's incredible. That's um, I remember when this application, your application came through, uh, it was so interesting, just the discussion about how significant the grocery carts are, shopping carts are, you know, um, for for food pantries such as cleaners and in, in the the look, the shopping locations throughout the state. Um, can you talk a little bit more about um, any updates or developments that have come with um, not only the shopping carts, but the senior shopping days? Uh, at all of your locations? Sure. Um, so I think like a lot of nonprofits, Gleaners has had its fair share of challenges during the pandemic. Um, with our senior shopping days, that was kind of a challenge because seniors tended to be more of an immunocompromised population. Um, it was difficult to be able to have the similar type of distributions in person where people would come in and get food. Um, so we've had to pivot to more drive through situations or come up with different solutions as to how we can distribute as much bulk food out to our clients while still protecting their health and their safety and, um, you know, making sure that we're following social distancing protocols. Um, now that the vaccine is widely available and now that, you know, we're kind of opening up to more in-person distributions, we're um, definitely excited to be able to do more of the traditional food pantry distributions and be able to give people the opportunity to come in and actually shop for the food that they need and for the food that's going to work best for their household. So I would say the most exciting update is the fact that we can host the program as it's originally intended um, and be able to have 
the client choice that we have for our senior shopping days. So the carts continue to be such a big lift for that to be able to go through the line and pick the items that people need. Um, and then we can back, uh, pack them up and put them in their cars for them. So it's been a huge, huge blessing for us to be able to offer for our seniors and just to be able to, you know, kind of go back to the way things were before the pandemic um, and, and make that transition. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I would love to go back to a time before the pandemic. I know it's, I bet that's so, so refreshing to, to have that sense again. Um, yeah, thank you for, for sharing that information. Uh, since your application for the, your community challenge grant was so well received, it was such a good project. And one of the reasons we're highlighting um, your project among others is because we want to encourage other um, you know, prospective applicants to to really um, give us their best uh, projects and um, and really put forth that effort um, and and just so we can really make a decision on um, which ones we want to fund this year. So if you don't mind just sharing some information on um, maybe some tips or words of wisdom on um, you know working with this uh, community challenge grant program, the application process. Any any helpful tips would be would be great. Sure, yeah. I I remember when we originally applied for this. Um, I read the description, and I know AARP is really focused on helping increase senior mobility. Um, and I sent this to our programs team, and one of our uh, programs rep emailed me back and said, actually, I've gotten some feedback that you know grocery carts would uh, be a good thing to add, and it seemed like it filled you know, the description of trying to increase mobility. So I think my best tip would just be to think creatively and to have conversations with the people that you're serving just to see, you know, what can we do that's a little outside of the box or something that, you know, would best serve your needs and be able to address some of those mobility gaps that our senior oh. clients are facing. Um, just because, you know, I might not have thought of that idea if we didn't have that conversation with some of our agency partners. So it was a huge help to be able to, um, you know, get feedback from the people we're trying to help and, um, you know, think of ideas that even if it doesn't originally strike as mobility, you know, it's definitely fits under that bill. Yeah, it definitely does. And um, food security is a huge issue. It's, a, it's, you know, something that we care about for, you know, 50 plus Hoosiers across the state. So um, it just seemed like uh, a real uh, combination of a lot of priorities that we're, we're, we try to support. Um, okay, so yeah, that that's super helpful. I, I really love the fact also that this is a, it's a public good, right? You know, if you're going to the food bank, food pantry, um, you can use those shopping carts over and over again. And it's something that is sustainable and will will continue into the future, so. Appreciate all of that. Um, yeah, so I just want to close. We talked a little bit about um, you know updates, new developments related to the project, but I, I want to close with giving you an opportunity to plug anything that's happening at Gleaners related to um, this project or uh, you know anything across the organization you'd like to share. Yeah, I just um, would love to plug Gleaners in general. Um, feel free to visit our website um, if you want to donate. Um, we would certainly love that opportunity. Or if you want to come in and volunteer, um, we have a huge need for volunteers at the moment in our warehouse, and our on-site pantry. Um, lots of different ways to get involved. Um, and just being mindful that, you know, we'd love to get to a point where we're back to normal and where the pandemic is over, but a lot of Hoosiers are still experiencing the effects of the pandemic. They're still struggling with hunger, still struggling with poverty, and it's going to be a long road ahead of uh, for those households that don't have enough income to make ends meet. So as much support as you could give to gleaners and other um, nonprofits that are in that fight together uh, to be able to help our community um, get out of the situation, um, that would be super helpful. Um, and then Gleaners is always here to, you know, win our lane of hunger relief to be able to not just provide as much food as possible to, to provide the nutritious food that um, our neighbors need, especially our senior neighbors need um, to help, you know, live a healthy lifestyle, reduce food insecurity, um, and just improve overall quality of life. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. 
Well, Bethany, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate you being here and sharing your thoughts. So thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you.